welcome to another edition of Data Center Pulse, and an episode focused on the chill-off. Today we've reached a major milestone in this project. We are starting testing. And it's been a lot of work to get here. Uh, Brian and team have really pulled together a lot of folks to make it happen. And the very first product that we're testing in here is the Knur Cool Therm, which is a contained solution. And with me, I have Heiko. Hi, Dean. And he's from Germany. He's flown in here all the way from Dresden just to go back and make sure this whole thing's going to work. Yeah, and I'm really proud that the Cool Therm this year is the first product in the Chill of Test. And I'm here to huh. explain. And that makes you number one then, right? Yeah, that's quite good. <laughs> explain yes. that uh, we have the product right in the second generation. I okay. uh, launched it back in 2002 uh -huh. and have it now in three versions. We have a 12 kW cooling capacity, right. 17 kW cooling capacity, 25 kW cooling capacity. And this one is? Here in the chill of test we have the 25 kW. Okay. And it is made, as you said, as a, what we call the closed architecture okay. is a closed air loop here inside. Right, so contained itself. It is All contained. the air is inside of the actual unit. Yeah. Okay. And the air actually come off from the bottom yep. and is placed here in the plenum mm -hmm. and the server take the air in and heating up the fans on the rear side collect them, shooting down to the heat exchanger. Okay. They get recooled and comes and the uh, cycle starts again. All right. So let's let's uh, take a look inside of this thing. Yeah. So how much CFM actually is going through this box? Sorry. Air yeah, coming off, and it is. I'm sorry. I'm on metric. Yeah. So it is 5,000 up to 5,500 cubic meter an hour. Okay. That depends on the control of the fan inside the server. Sometimes they really push into the uh, heat exchanger, sometimes they block, okay. so it interferes uh, from application to application in terms of the airflow. However, we keep stabilize the temperature out of the heat exchanger, the customer can adjust it from 20 to 25 on the Celsius scale, okay. and we also balance the flow rate in our fans to the demand of the flow rate from the server equipment. So you said 25C. 25C is the maximum setup. Uh, for what? Supply, return, delta Supply, C? supply inside. Supply the air okay. here between 20 and 25 degrees C. Okay, and in this test we're actually varying those, right? So the variation, we balanced it, so we stabilize the temperature on a very narrow corridor once okay. the setup is, let's say 20, so it goes up and down, maximum half a Kelvin, half a degree on the sensor scale. Okay, so so very tight control over what is uh, sensed and delivered, yeah. right, within the system itself. Let's, let's close the door so okay. that, we, that we can hear each other. So let's take a look at the back. Oh, yes. So the same idea. We've got um, everything contained back here. But uh, if we open this up, it's going to get rather loud again. <laughs> that the fan stopped immediately after you open the door. Right. So uh, it tames down noise-wise. So the only noise we've got right now are the actual servers running. And the servers are not under load. They're at idle at the moment, so they're low fan speed as well. Yeah. Uh, but when those kick up and this, there's a lot of noise in that cabinet. Yeah. Okay, so why don't you tell us a little bit about how this works. Yeah, first of all, I would emphasize this kind of fans. Uh, we call it electronic commutator Oops. fan. Yeah, uh -huh. easy fan. And especially when it comes to reduce RPM, reduce fan speed, they are very, very low in power consumption. So the variable speed fans, they can go down to what range? So the minimum is 12%. Okay. And we set it up to 25 to uh, be on the safe side and have okay. minimum air circulation in, inside these close to cabinets. Okay. So, and if it's go um, to maximum, the power consumption on uh, 25 kW on a regular base is in the range of 1 kW for three of them fans. Okay. And uh, the fans also designed in a way of N plus 1 redundancy. Sure. So if one fan fails, uh, the other fans kick in 100%. Normally they run with in the range of 70, 75%. Sure. So, and take over and can recirculate all the demanded uh, airflow. And, and there's three zones here, right? So it's delivering different cooling paths. Like you're saying, this entire thing could fail, 
and then the other units will actually pick it up. So let's take a look inside of here. The, the fans reach right about here, yes? Yes. Okay, and if you see that, there's there's room inside for the air to surf, yeah. but it's not going to resurf back into the front. And then, so even if a fan fails, it's picking up all the heat yeah. within it. Yeah, and then, the good thing is, the air intake of the fan and the outlet of the server equipment is very, very close. Tightly matched. So yeah. it just goes straight inside. And if you have a look down here, then you actually see the three air ducts coming off the door. So inside, uh, the air is separated. That defense, in case of fan failure, not affect each other, each other, and that we have uh, what we call the windmill effect, a recirculation inside. Sure. So that's why we have here air ducts uh, between the three different fans. Got it. Okay. And this is a wider cabinet, right? So um, as we can see here, there's cutouts in there for actually the devices. So we've got switch infrastructure here that's delivered over. You've got room for the PDUs on this side, or, or vice versa. And we've got the server tech PDUs in there in the moment. Um, but this gives us now a full clear path for the actual uh, cooling coming through. The only challenge is we still have cables that are potentially blocking it. Do you see any problems with that? No. No, this Fans works? actually are strong enough, both of the machines in here. Right. You need to take attention for the cable management yep. uh, that you make it on a, on a, on a proper way. So uh, if it's uh, blocked with too much cable, so you need to uh, take them to the side that you clean up the air pass into the fence. Sure. Okay. So once you have a look down here, uh, in this box we have the chilled water supply and return and the control valve, so it's not seen, it's behind here, mm -hmm. and this valve stabilizes the air intake temperature to the front okay. and variables the, air, the water flow inside the heat exchanger. Okay. So that we really keep the lowest flow rate also on the chilled water side, also to save energy in terms of the power consumption of the pumps. Okay. We minimize also in that way the flow rate on the chilled water side. Got it. We've got 36U in this test. You can also be doing the cool loop. Yes. Right? This is the cool therm. And that one's going to have 40U and be compared against the other products as well. But you feel you're going to do pretty good in this test? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Looking for well, number one, right? <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Okay. So um, I think that uh, let's take a listen to how much noise there is when this thing is actually running. Yeah. So it's up here, yeah? You're taller than me, so you can switch it on. <laughs> Okay, so what I want you to do is pay attention to the noise as I'm talking. It's going to become very difficult to hear me because there's a jet engine behind me. Yeah, the airflow for 25 kW is quite a lot. 25 kW. And now, so now listen to the noise. Let's close it. <laughs> Sensor. Yes? Wow. wow. You know, noise is one of those big things in a data center we really don't talk about a lot. Uh, but this really shows how much noise can be contained inside of a contained system. So, Heiko, thank you very much for actually uh, working with me on this session. And stay tuned for additional episodes of Data Center Pulse focused on the chill off.